Today I'm working on a 2001 Chevy Malibu. I'm going to be changing the uh, throttle position sensor. Anytime you're working on any kind of electrical component on your engine, it's always a good idea to disconnect the negative battery terminal. This way you don't short anything out by accident. And on this vehicle, and on most vehicles, the throttle position sensor is located pretty much right next to where the throttle body is and the position sensor on this vehicle is it's difficult to see it's right in here it's this round piece and it's connected via this uh, harness it has two screws one up here one at the bottom and it's a good idea to use a, a T20 bit to unscrew these off so let's get started and we'll try doing that. You don't have a whole lot of room to work with in here. So just take your time. And make sure you use the T20 bit. Because otherwise you're going to wind up stripping out those screws. One thing I forgot to mention is uh, you just want to disconnect this wiring harness. There's that metal clip right here. You just pull that up gently and it slides right out. And then just move it off to the side. Okay, I got the top screw out. Now I'm working on the bottom screw. Uh, it's just very slow moving because there's not a lot of room to work with in here. So just take your time and just take it nice and slow. What I'm doing for the bottom screw is I just have a, an extender for my bit and I took the ratchet off and I'm just using my fingers to turn the extender. I just use the ratchet just to break the, uh, the hold of the nut and it's a lot easier if you just use this way to get the nut off all the way. Okay, got the bottom nut out, and then if you can see, it just pops right off. Just take it out gently because there's a. This has to be seated over a bar that sticks out from the throttle. And then we'll compare this to the new part that we got. Okay, this is the old part that I just took out. It has three prongs on the inside that connect to the harness. And now we're going to compare this old part to the new part that we're going to put on next. The new part I got off of Amazon, same three prongs. The new part I got off of Amazon, I paid, I think, $42.99. So <clears throat> just think by doing this yourself, uh, you go to a, you know an auto shop to have this done, they're going to charge you at least three times the price for just for the part. So you're talking roughly $125 to $130 just for the part, plus the labor to install it, which will probably run you at least another 100 so by changing this part out yourself, you're saving yourself roughly about $275, which is nice. Uh, it's better in your pocket than in somebody else's pocket. And these are the two screws I took out. Uh, just so you have a... You can judge how long the screw is as you're unscrewing it, because you don't want to drop it down into the engine bay. Uh, you might want to put something underneath where you're unscrewing, just to catch this uh, screw in case you drop it um, like I said it's a I uh, I'm sorry a t20 bit that you need to unscrew this you don't want to use anything else because then you're gonna wind up stripping out the the head of the screw um, the whole reason I'm doing this uh, changing out this part is 
uh, the vehicle was having a rough idle or a high idle. It was up over uh, 2,000 RPMs. I cleaned out the throttle body, changed the air filter, and the I changed I uh, cleaned off the mass airflow sensor, and that worked for about a day. But then it went back up to another high idle. So I'm changing this out, and I'll let you know if it works. Okay, now it's time to put our new uh, sensor on. Uh, if you look where it seats, or it's supposed to sit. Sorry, I'm trying to shine a light down there. Uh, there's one flat side. Oh, come on. Nothing ever works when you want it to. Uh, there we go. I think. All right. There's a flat side that you want to see. Basically, there's only one way you can sit this on correctly. Because if you look inside, there's that flat edge. And that flat edge can only sit correctly one way. And it just slides right on. And you just want to make sure the... Uh, the clip for the wiring harness is facing the driver's side of the vehicle. Okay? Uh, I don't know if you can see that down there, but it's just the same exact way you took it off. Alright, so let's screw this back on slowly and carefully, and we'll hook it up and see what happens. Okay, uh, I'm ready to put the screws back on. Uh, just a little tip. I'm going to do the bottom screw first. I'm going to finger tighten this screw in as far as I can get it with my fingers. Then I'm going to use the bit extender. And with my fingers, I'm just going to tighten it as far as I can with the extender. And then I'm going to put my ratchet on and tighten it up. And I'm going to do the same for the top. Actually, don't tighten it all the way with the ratchet, the bottom one, until you get the top one in finger tight. And then with the extender. After you get both of them in that way, then use the ratchet to tighten up the bottom and then the top. Okay, I finger tightened the bottom screw in and now I'm using the extender with just my fingers to tighten it as far as I can get it. Just go slow because you don't want to drop anything because you'll have a hard time finding it and fishing it out. Okay, that bottom one is in finger tight and extender tight. I'm going to do the same thing with the top screw. And then I'm going to use the ratchet to tighten them both down. Okay, I tightened down the bottom one, <coughs> the bottom screw, with the ratchet. I couldn't film it because it was too tight in there to hold the phone while I was doing this. So I'm tightening, tightening down the top screw right now. You don't want to over tighten it. You just want to make sure it's snug. And okay. Okay, so both screws are in. Now what you want to do is take your wiring harness. And plug that back in. Let's make sure it snaps. I had loosened up these wires from the wire holder, so I'm just putting those back in. Uh, that's basically it. I'm just going to reconnect the negative battery terminal that I disconnected, and then we'll start her up and see how she goes. Just before you start the car, after you reconnect the battery, just take a look around the engine bay, make sure you don't leave any tools or rags or anything in the engine bay before you start the vehicle. Uh, it's always good to double check just to make sure. Okay, now we're back in the vehicle, everything's out of the engine bay. We're going to start the car and see what the RPMs read. Okay. They are just under about, they're about 900 RPMs, which is pretty normal for this car. 
Um, it was up around 3,000 RPMs uh, when I started noticing this a couple of days ago. So we'll just let this run for a minute. We'll give it a little gas. Okay. That looks pretty good. Um, I'll show you something if once you put that throttle position sensor in and you go to start your car if it is running still high the RPMs I'll show you something you can do to bring it back down okay if you happen to start your car after you put the uh, throttle position sensor in the new one and the RPMs are still running high what you want to do is come back and loosen up these screws a little bit uh, just be careful because with the engine running obviously things are hot in here uh, especially if it's running at a high RPM but what you want to do is just loosen these screws a little bit and you can without you don't have to take off the wiring harness it's just the two screws you're going to loosen and you're just going to rotate the sensor gently towards the passenger side just ever so slightly and once you do that just you don't have to tighten up the screws because you want to see the uh, the RPMs go back start the car and see if the RPMs came down that should help uh, that's basically it thanks for watching uh, if you like the video if I helped you give me a thumbs up and subscribe thanks a lot and have a great day